So in one of our studies, we tried to replicate what Cambridge Analytica was doing just to, just to see how, how effective their methods were. So in this study, we used essentially, we targeted people with advertisement based on their personality and their personality was derived from a single like. We didn't even take 10 likes. We derived people's personality from a single like. And we posted ads on Facebook trying to sell real stuff. We're selling, we're not selling politicians. We're not selling, um, you know, alcohol or cigarettes. We're selling cosmetics. So the experiment uh, involves people really spending their money. So it's not just something based in the lab where I was just asking people about their opinions. And we found that if you adjust the message to match person's personality, you can boost the sales by 50 to 75 percent actual sales 50 to so actual, 75 percent yes and we are talking here about first of all we are talking here about very crude personality assessment it was just one like it wasn't one 10, like. it was just one <laughs> facebook like so if you boost this you boost your effectiveness but also we are talking about the environment where marketing is already highly optimized when you post an ad on facebook facebook already chooses which people are going to see the ad and tries to optimize uh, this marketing uh, communication. Now, how mm. much they're trying to optimize, we don't really know. And actually many people would suspect that Facebook is not really trying that hard because Facebook doesn't really care that much. And in fact, the more people compete for eyeballs, so the less accurate the Facebook marketing, the better. But this is a side, side, uh, side notion, a side idea here. The bottom line is this is already very highly optimized marketing environment. And yet, personality targeting allowed us in those experiments, and we run it across many different products and we run it many times, boost the efficiency, boost the sales by 75%. Modifying one's communication in recognition of individual differences between people or differences between organizations as well is just not only a good business practice because it boosts sales and the customer satisfaction, but it's also a sign of respect. We should talk differently to people depending on who they are. And we definitely do it in person. We just automatically do it in person when we adjust our behavior uh, while we chat with other people. And sometimes we have just met this person and yet we we'll behave, we we'll trick them uh, treat them in a unique, customized way. So the bottom line is, is that I believe that going forward, we should uh, make sure that we behave in the same way when we interact with people uh, online in the digital spaces, even when we interact with them uh, automatically uh, through algorithms. And by the way, this is what people want. People chose Google because they came to Google they could come to Google, they could put a query in the search engine and, good, and get personalized results, personalized not only for the query, but also for themselves. They didn't want to go to Yahoo, which was showing everyone the same, you know, huge number of links to, to things that Yahoo believed was important. Now, people go to Netflix because Netflix chooses the movies that Netflix believes that a given person will want using a recommender system. And people love it. People don't want to watch the same thing that everyone else has watches. I mean, some of us do, but people just want to see things that they will particularly uh, enjoy. And I think that we should essentially, I hope that we will have more of that in uh, uh, interpersonal or algorithm to person communication in digital spaces as well.